What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Shark Bites. Loads of you have been badgering me for a while now to do a video about Mediterranean great white sharks. So I thought I might as well just go ahead and do it. It's actually a really interesting topic because some of the stuff that we've learned about Mediterranean great white sharks in the last few years is downright weird. Because not only are they so elusive, some of the great white sharks that have been caught in that region are some of the biggest individuals ever on record. But how did they even get there? in the first place. It's a pretty isolated ocean basin, right? And as of currently, there are only two routes in and out of the Med. You either come in via the Strait of Gibraltar between the southern tip of Spain and the northern tip of Morocco here, or you come in through the Suez Canal via Egypt and the Red Sea here. Considering they only finished building the Suez in 1869, and we know that great white sharks have been in the Mediterranean longer than 150 years, I think it's a pretty safe bet that they came in through the Strait of Gibraltar. For many years, people believed that the great whites in the Mediterranean were ones that had come from the Atlantic Ocean. And it does make sense when you look at it on a map. It's not too much of a stretch for them to venture from here, across the Atlantic Ocean into the Med, or from here in South Africa, up the western coast of Africa and into the Med. But when some pretty clever scientists looked into the genetic makeup of great white sharks, they realized that this couldn't be the case at all. The white sharks in the Mediterranean were genetically different to the white sharks that were found in the Atlantic. And it turned out they were actually much more closely related to the great white sharks found in the Pacific Ocean around Australia and Japan. So the white sharks in the Med were sharks that were once upon a time swimming around in the Pacific Ocean. Naturally, the scientists looking into this tried to figure out how something like this could happen. And they originally thought that around 450,000 years ago during the middle to late Pleistocene era, that extreme climate change had caused a few adult female great white sharks to simply get lost. The extreme climate change could have produced strange water currents that confused them during their navigation or uprooted their prey species, which would have forced the sharks to follow their food into uncharted territories. In this situation, the sharks may have been swimming down the east coast of Africa when a particularly strong current pushed them further down and around the Cape of Good Hope. And then they continued west along with the current and ended up in the Atlantic Ocean. And because these sharks would have used usually swum east to their birthing grounds, it meant that this time, instead of ending back up in Australia and Japan, they moved east through the Strait of Gibraltar and into the Mediterranean. Talk about not following the sat-nav. Because white sharks tend to remain pretty loyal to their breeding grounds, once they'd settled into their new surroundings, they didn't leave. And because they didn't leave, it likely meant the Mediterranean was a really good place for them to breed with favorable conditions like prey abundance and space to move around. But it wasn't until a couple of years ago that that theory was proved to be completely wrong. And it was proved to be wrong because of some pretty rapid advancements in genomic technologies. Researchers were recently able to properly sequence the mitochondrial DNA of some Mediterranean white shark specimens. And they found that the white sharks didn't end up in the med 450,000 years ago like they'd originally thought, and they instead discovered that they've actually been there for around 3.2 million years. So how did those Pacific white sharks end up from all the way over there in the Pacific to the Mediterranean? Well, millions and millions of years ago, there was once a route connecting the Pacific and Atlantic oceans, known as the Central American Waterway. This waterway allowed marine species to freely travel between the two ocean basins without having to divert around the continents. Gradually over time, North and South America became connected by the Panama Isthmus, which meant that the Central American waterway was officially blocked off by land, which also likely meant that the white sharks from the Pacific migrated through the Central American waterway across the Atlantic and into the Mediterranean. When the waterway was blocked by Panama, it created some pretty drastic changes in climate in the Atlantic Ocean. And as a result of that climate change, many fish species that lived in the Atlantic became extinct. And the Atlantic white shark might have been one of those species that went extinct. So that likely means that the white sharks we see in the Atlantic today are as a result of a more recent repopulation of the sharks, probably originating from the white sharks that inhabited South Africa, which is why the sharks in South Africa and the ones in the Western Atlantic are pretty closely related when we look at their DNA, and why the white sharks in the Mediterranean are genetically different from those two populations, but similar to the ones in the Pacific. Oh, we got there in the end. <laughs> I do think that's pretty epic though, and credit has to go to the scientists that figured that out. One of the more worrying results from that study though was that the sharks in the Mediterranean have low genetic variability to each other, which means genetically, the white sharks in the med are all really similar to each other, probably because of inbreeding. And that would suggest that the population there is extremely small and likely critically endangered. So earlier I mentioned to you about the Mediterranean having really favorable conditions
auditions for White Sharks. And back a long time ago, that definitely would have been the case. They'd have had plenty of food to eat in the form of dolphins, whales, tunas, and turtles, and really nice, safe breeding grounds for them to give birth to their young. And it's both of those factors that could explain how they got so big here. Some of the biggest white sharks ever recorded have been found in the Mediterranean, probably the most famous of which is the Malta white shark. This particular individual shark, although hotly debated down the years, is said to have been somewhere between 6.6 .6 and 7.3 meters long. That's somewhere between 22 and 24 feet long. I do say hotly debated here because it wasn't reliably measured at the time and those lengths are based off photographic evidence, but it was also reported that inside the stomachs of this shark was a two meter blue shark and a two and a half meter dolphin. So that does give you at least an indication that this was a very big white shark. But that's not the only one. The Mediterranean isn't a stranger to massive white sharks. Another six and a half meter white shark was caught off the coast of France in Marseille back in 1925. And then another three individuals that were over six meters long in Sicily, Mallorca, and Greece. What we have to consider here as well is these are just the ones that were caught. There may have been other ones out there at the time that were just as big, maybe even a tad bigger. But those white sharks that I've just listed to you there were all caught between 1925 and 1987. And I think it's quite telling that the last one there was in 1987. That's nearly 40 years ago. These were massive sharks, probably upwards of 60 to 70 years old, and it takes them a really long time to get to those sizes. There was some pretty cool footage of a white shark in Italy back in 1998, so 25 years ago, of a white shark taking a bite out of a thresher shark that was caught by a father and son who were out fishing. It's tough to say exactly how big, but I'd lean to it being between five and six meters long. Interestingly, that video in question is thought to be the first ever video of a living great white shark in the Mediterranean. Since then with the invention of smartphones, videos of white sharks have cropped up every now and again, but still pretty sparingly. This one here in Mallorca was reported to be a five meter white shark by a ton of news outlets in 2018. Although looking at this video right now, there is no way that that's a five meter shark. It's way too small. Although after doing some reading around this, it turned out that most specialists believe this individual to actually be a mako shark instead of a white shark. Although this one here, supposedly off the coast of Italy is undoubtedly a white shark, which which also looks pretty big as well. Maybe again, around five meters long. And then this one here, again off the coast of Italy in a place called Lampedusa, another large white shark, probably in the five to six meter range. But the question that most people have today is, where are they all? These are pretty big fish, right? So they should be cropping up more commonly, especially considering loads of people these days have smartphones capable of recording video. To figure this out, it's probably worth having a quick look at some of the historical sightings for great white sharks around the Mediterranean. And here they are. Each red dot on this map of the Mediterranean is a recorded great white shark sighting. In total, there's 773 dating back from 1453 to 2016. Although the overwhelming majority of these sightings, 718 of them to be precise, occurred after 1860. We can see that the sightings tend to hug the coasts of the Mediterranean, and this is probably explained by the fact that a lot of these sightings were collected from fisheries catch data, as well as strandings data. So you'd expect these to be pretty close to the coasts. It's tough to to see where the real clusters are, but if we have a look at this second map here, we get a better idea of where the hotspots are. And we can see pretty clearly in the darker blue areas of the map where the higher mean number of sightings are. The Tyrrhenian Sea off the west coast of Italy, the Sicilian Channel, and then the Adriatic Sea off the east coast of Italy. Italy seems to be cropping up there quite a lot, and you'll remember that those two videos I showed you a couple of minutes ago, both of those were sightings off the coast of Italy. And it's this area, the Sicilian Channel, that has been highlighted as a key geographical area for Mediterranean white sharks. Scientists believe that this location could be one of the last remaining nursery areas for white sharks in the Med. Large adult females, juveniles, and newborn individuals have all been documented here in the past few years, either by people filming filming them or fishermen reporting them as accidental catches in their nets. The area also overlaps considerably with the bluefin tuna migration who migrate in large numbers through the Sicilian channel at different times of the year. So you've got a nursery ground and a pretty abundant food source in the form of those tuna. This little area of the Mediterranean could truly be one of the last strongholds for white sharks in this region. As for the rest of the Mediterranean white sharks, it does seem now like they are on their last legs. Studies have shown white shark declines of between 58 and 70 
72% in the Mediterranean over the last 40 years. It's due to a number of different factors, but fisheries stands out as the main one. Not only because the white sharks themselves are being caught and killed, but also their food source as well. Mediterranean tuna populations have been drastically declining for years alongside marine mammal populations as well. With changing ocean temperatures too, the last remaining white sharks could be pushed to the cooler regions of the Mediterranean, where resources may not be as good as where they are now, further leading to their decline. There has been some debate as to whether the Mediterranean white sharks will be pushed back out into the Atlantic Ocean as the ocean temperatures warm up in the Mediterranean basin. I know that Osearch has suggested that this could be a possibility in the coming years, but I'm not 100% sure I'm buying it just yet. We'll have to see. Never say never in the shark world. They are continually doing things that prove us wrong. But the Strait of Gibraltar right now is being guarded by those yacht-eating killer whales, so how are they going to get past those guys? <laughs> anyway, joking aside, what do you guys think is going to happen with these Mediterranean white sharks then? Do you reckon they've got a stronghold near Italy? Are all the massive white sharks that once swam around the Mediterranean gone? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Please do give the video a like if you enjoyed it, and of course, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. But before you head off, if you enjoyed today's Mediterranean white shark episode, then you're going to want to click this video right here. In it, we have a look at sharks in ancient and medieval history, particularly with the Greeks in the Mediterranean. Have you ever wondered where the idea of sea monsters come from? If so, click this video right here.